Hi, my name's Doug Cokill. I'm a viola player with the Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra. And today I'd love to tell you about the viola. This is a viola that I made myself. It's quite a big instrument. It's a bit bigger than a violin, I think you'll notice. Um, quite a few inches bigger, actually. So this viola was constructed out of European woods. We've got a maple back and a spruce top. So the, the top of the instrument is really the main part that vibrates. Really, it's a bit like a drum, the viola, or any string instrument, is the top part that really vibrates. The whole instrument does vibrate, but the, the main part being the top. Inside also, underneath you can't see, but about there is a, something called a sound post. So this sound post goes between the top of the viola and the back of the viola, and supports the arching of the instrument, but also helps improve the sound and the um, quick response of the sound. On the other side of the instrument, running down this side, is called the bass bar. So it's a long strip of wood that supports the arching also and helps um, with the bass sound of the instrument. So the viola kind of sits in between the violin world and the cello world. So it's sort of in between there, a bit like an, that's why it's often called the alto. And a common misconception about string instruments is that they're just bent into shape. So we can see that it's curved that way and that, you know, that the sides are curved. It's true to a point, yes, there are some bent pieces of wood. The sides are bent, so you bet they're bent under heat and steam. But the top and the back are actually carved out of a solid block of wood. So the maker decides to on the arching they want and what they believe that's going to best help the sound. And then they would thickness the wood then and reduce it down to, you know, only like two millimetres in some spots perhaps or even less, uh, depending on the instrument, uh, to, to help with the, 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 the instrument to respond and vibrate. So it's the, the, the sound starts with the bow, as you see, the, our horsehair here, and it's drawn across the string, which causes the string to vibrate. Every instrument you'll see will have a slightly different hole on the front. You see guitars with a circle, and other instruments with probably ma uh, mandolins would have a different shaped hole, but on violins, violas and cellos, double basses, we have something called an F hole. So you see that it is the shape of an F. If you draw the shape of an F, I'm doing it backwards, there we go, for front ways, that's an F hole. So it's just called that because of the, it looks like an F. It's quite an old thing, it goes back hundreds and hundreds of years as to why that shape exists. Most makers today just stick with that because it's part of the tradition and it looks cool. So making an instrument does take quite a long time hundreds of, of hours perhaps. If I was doing it full time, I reckon it would probably take about two months, but because I'm playing in the orchestra full time, it probably took about a year to actually finish from beginning to end. Um, I really love being able to play on an instrument which I made. Um, also, I mean, I love making, it's really fun. It's a great thing that, that complements my job. I love playing in the TSO and I really hope you enjoy the recording today.